Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in for another review from the 2023 EMTB Shootout Series presented by Fox Racing and Schwalbe Tires. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the most unique looking bike and I think one that a lot of our riders were very excited to test out and that is the Ibis Oso. So let's get into the details and see how it performed. So the Ibis Oso is a 155 millimeter, 170 mil, 29 inch wheeled enduro all mountain aggressive e-bike. And if 155 of travel isn't enough for you out back, you can upstroke this shock to give it 170 mil of rear wheel travel. And it's also dual crown certified. So you can increase the travel up front to make this a pretty big, bad and aggressive e-bike machine. It is also powered by a Bosch Performance Line CX motor with a 750 watt hour battery. It has a Bosch Kiox 300 display and the LED remote. Um, also other electronic integrations include a Lupine headlight and a pretty neat little tail light there that's integrated into the seat post collar. Um, this bike retails for $10,999. It is the only model available. The rest of the build is made up with Shimano XT brakes, a SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain, Ibis's in-house Blackbird wheels and stem, as well as a bike yoke dropper post. Um, before we get too much into the ride impressions, Robert will walk us through the geometry on our size large test bike. Yeah, so the Ibis went fairly crazy, I would say. With the geometry on this thing, it is the longest bike on test. The wheelbase is almost 1300 mil long, which for a size large e-bike uh, this year anyway, seems to be exceptionally long. Um, so size large that we tested has a 500 millimeter reach, a big 650 millimeter stack. It has a 444 millimeter chain stay, a 64 degree head tube angle, 78 degree affected seat tube angle, although the actual angle is much slacker than that. So polar riders may experience a slightly more relaxed seating position. And the bottom bracket is 31 millimeters below the axles. All right, um, and that gives a 340 millimeter bottom bracket height, which I think we will be talking about plenty later in the uh, ride impressions. Um, so, what do we want to talk about first? We talk about fit, finish, and value. I think that's probably an important place to start. Certainly, yeah. Um, Lead it off there. Probably not the strongest point of the Ibis, I wouldn't say. Yeah, the fit of, or the finish of the battery cover on the frame, it's a plastic cover that sits on the carbon fiber frame and it just doesn't sit that nicely on it. It lets mud through. It doesn't look like it fits it all that well. Um, and there's a couple of other little bits around the frame that aren't the cleanest, I wouldn't say. Um, kind of paint missing on the uh, hardware holes for the, for the linkage and stuff like that. So to me, it doesn't scream an $11,000 bike. Um, and I don't necessarily think the componentry that you get on it, the in-house wheels, GX drivetrain. I mean, a, a grip two, couldn't even get a grip or a fit four. Yeah, uh, the grip sweep damper on the fork, it's not, it's not fantastic. It's not $11,000 to me, uh, but the way that it rides is better than the, the spec that's on it, I would say. Okay. Um, so it might not necessarily be an issue for people, especially if you're a particular fan of either how it looks or the Ibis brand. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with you for sure there. I, I think definitely not a, from a value perspective of the parts you get, what you're paying for, agreed. Charge port cover I don't love. The battery cover is just is not great at all. Um, cockpit integration with the wires and how they're running to the frames. There's definitely there's definitely stuff here that doesn't say a refined eleven thousand dollar bike, right? Like say the the pivot, for example. Um, but like you said, there probably are some Ibis people out there, and the bike does ride well. And let's talk about that next, Sean. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it rode great today. I mean, okay. I racked up some frequent flyer miles. Yep, yep. But uh, we'll stick with climbing first. I mean, it did pretty well for a good portion of my ride today. Um, I had a, a 
some sort of error, accelerometer error, and that seemed to have messed with the bike a little bit. Um, and then climbing over rough, rooty sections, I did smack pedal and bottom bracket once or twice. But uh, aside from that, I thought it was a great climber. Okay, all right. And what did you think of the climbing of it? Yeah, I, I like the, the platform, the DW Link, or uh, yeah, suspension platform that's on it. Has quite a nice balance for me of being fairly comfortable and giving you pretty good traction, but not wallowing everywhere while you're pe pedaling it. Um, I was able to clear some climbs on this thing that I wasn't expecting to, or certainly other bikes were starting to fall behind on. Um, so yeah, I think the climbing performance is pretty good, uh, but the bottom bracket is fairly low. Yeah. And I don't know if that's necessarily because the actual height of it is all that low, but also because the axles are so far apart on this right. thing, you end up with a kind of, yeah, shallower rollover angle or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, your pedals are more liable to clip. Do you think that long reach and the long wheelbase also is helping on the climbs? Yeah. I didn't even notice that it was a 500 reach. Really? Yeah, I, I thought it was a 485 or something like that. Like, okay. It felt short to me. But. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Lengthwise to you, obviously 6'2", you're about 6'1", 6'2", as well. Um, so not a crazy long reach for you guys. No, not a crazy long reach, but definitely felt like the biggest bike on test, okay. um, as the numbers would suggest as well. Okay. Yeah, for me, the, the 500 is definitely longer than I ideally like to ride. Um, I'm five foot 11 and yeah, this is definitely a solid 20 mil or so longer than I would like um, out of the reach. And frankly, the wheelbase is also quite a bit longer than I ideally like, but um, climbing performance is solid. The bottom bracket height was an issue uh, for me and, and the technical rocky type of climbing I really enjoy. I thought the length also was a little bit tough uh, to manage in some of the tighter, more technical bits where you're trying to weave through terrain or make some sharp switchbacks. Um, that being said, the flip side is the stability that you have on steep descents, uh, steep shoots, high speed bits of trail. Um, the, the sizing discussion, I think, massive jumps, 40 millimeters, like the medium is a 460, which is way too small and a large is a 500 and then an extra large is 540. Like those are really big jumps. And I think, I think that's gonna alienate a lot of riders who are just gonna be in that middle zone and they're gonna not be able to find a bike that's close to the right size for them because they're gonna be forced way too big or way too small. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess the average size rider is probably 5'10", right? That, that's, Somewhere, yeah, 5'10", 5'11". seems to be, uh, you know, throughout my career of riding with people, that seems to be the average height. And yeah, that I think every rider at 5'10 is gonna have a bit of a dilemma um, to figure out whether they go long up to 500 or fairly short and compact down to 460. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I do think that, that gap is particularly big and uh, a bit polarizing and I think certainly like a, a medium large or something would be really nice to see um, for a bike that costs 11,000 pounds, dollars, <laughs> yeah. especially. Okay, uh, where did the bike excel for you? Where did you like it most? I liked it in the air a lot. Okay. That okay. jump line, yeah. woo! Okay. It looked like you were having a good time. I was having a great time. Yeah. Like <laughs> even the length, like it didn't, I didn't mind it or notice it much on some of those tighter like bull turns that we were in. Um, but I did, it was a bit awkward into that short little double before one of the step downs and got real weird. Okay. Yeah, real weird. And how about up in the woods where it's a lot of quick changes in directions and tighter right. corners? I mean, I wasn't feeling it this morning, okay. uh, whether that was just me being me or the bike, but I mean, it didn't slow me down much, but I also wasn't pushing it beyond what I was comfortable with. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, but it did it did well. Okay. I was quite surprised by this thing on the descents. You were? Actually, yeah. Um, Sp what part of the descent specifically? Especially, some of the rocky stuff. Okay. Um, I thought it charged really well. Yeah. And I thought it had a really nice kind of blend of sensitivity, but without being too um, too soft and wallowy. I was expecting to take it from the rocks to somewhere like here with some uh, tackier dirt and uh, harder compressions and, uh, to find that it was going to be too soft and flexy in the back because I'd found that it was quite compliant and. Right pretty good at uh, finding traction and keeping the wheel stuck to the ground through the rocky stuff. But I slashed a few turns, didn't feel it 
wandering or super vague like I was expecting. So yeah, I think they've done a fairly good job at finding the balance there. Okay. And it, it charges rough stuff real good. I would agree for sure. That was, you know, we've had this bike for several months. Uh, well, actually I shouldn't say we've, not this bike. Uh, the first bike we had uh, was apparently a pre-production unit and developed a crack and- um, So some QC problems. Yeah, it seemed like there were some issues. So this is a replacement frame, but long story short, we've had quite a bit of time in a lot of different terrain. Uh, aboard an Ibis Oso and um, this newer bike here that we've had for a couple of weeks has done well uh, so far no problems that have or were present on the other model um, but suspension for sure is an impressive thing to talk about on this bike I think the it, it almost feels like to me in some ways the Orbea it's kind of like that stiff performance minded suspension platform that isn't harsh or abusive but also doesn't just get like blown through the travel or get overwhelmed like it really does well at high speed and just hammering terrain over and over um, and that that was something that really surprised us and i i think the fork you know maybe that kind of the lower end damper was a little bit exacerbated by the quality of this suspension platform um, it would be nice to just see what a little better product on there would make this bike increase too but at the same time with this level of product it still rode very well and there was no worry about sending it deep or launching it into chunky gnarly rooty rock gardens or anything like that and that was pretty cool yeah i mean the 155 it felt more yeah for sure. yeah you would not have guessed that this bike has 155 mil of travel but by any means and i could only imagine by going up to 170 um, what that would make this bike do and, and be capable of for sure. Uh, so who do you think the ideal consumer for this bike's gonna be? It's gonna be somebody who likes to ride hard and fast. Okay. Probably somebody with more open terrain, uh, probably less technical climbs. Uh, That's length, length related? Length related and pedal clearance related. Okay. Um, yeah, certainly wider open terrain, people who like to charge. Okay. All right, um, well, Sean, any final thoughts from you? I think we discussed everything. Okay. So overall, you're happy with the bike, you like it, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I like everything about it, but the value just isn't there. Okay. That's what would hold me back from picking this as a bike that I'd want to own. Well, folks, there you have it, the Ibis Oso review. Um, overall, a really solid performing bike. Uh, we didn't really talk about the looks, but I think most of our crew really liked or grew to like the way it looked if they didn't like it at first. Um, certainly unique, but the performance is there. The suspension platform is impressive. You can increase travel if you need more. Um, so from a ride perspective, a solid bike, low BB might be an issue, but as far as something that we can recommend to riders, I think the, the value discussion really makes it tough from a, a spec and also like a fit and finish. Um, side it, it, it's there's just a few things missing there if you're an ibis fan you love the way it looks and you just got to have it you won't be disappointed it's definitely an awesome riding bike but um, i think the value and of course the geometry right the if you're not in that sweet spot of the geo could be some things to consider as you're making your decisions in the future um, please don't forget to stick around through the rest of this series as we work our way towards the grand finale and the round table where we can put this against the other 12 bikes in our series. Thanks again to Fox and Schwalbe for making this series happen. Please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and we hope to see you out on the trails.